Hi, my name is Elizabeth Gronke, and I work at the American Folk Art Museum as an access educator. It's near Lincoln Center in New York City. Some of you have been there before, and some of you have met me before, and I'm very happy to be able to make this video visit with you today. I want to share an artist with you, and before I even tell you this artist's name, we're going to look at some images, you're going to think about what you're seeing, you're going to be using your mind, you're going to be forming opinions, which is what we want, and hopefully at the end, you're also going to be doing something with your hands. So get ready, I'm about to show you the first image. All right, we have our first image. I'll give you time to look at it, talk amongst yourselves. Feel free to pause the video if you feel like you have a lot to talk about. And let's just see what we see here. What do you see? I see a young woman. Lots of times when I've shown this piece to people, they say it looks like a movie star. It's a very glamorous shot, isn't it? And the color. What do you notice about the color? It's pretty saturated, isn't it? Do you think this was a color photograph or do you think this was a black and white photograph that somebody painted on top of? Any other observations you want to make about it to each other? What about her expression? What do you think about this piece? So now that you've formed some of your own opinions about this piece, I'll tell you a few things. It was hand painted. It was not a movie star but it was a very glamorous shot, right? No denying that. Now, before I tell you anything about the artist who created this piece, I'm gonna show you one more and you'll get a few more clues about who made it and what their inspiration was. So we have here the same artist, the same subject matter, but a different photograph. What do you notice now? Are there similarities from the first one? Any differences? What's your opinion of this photograph? There's a lot to look at. She's looking very regal. In fact, it's kind of hard to see because of the pattern behind her, but she is wearing something on her head. No, it's not a pineapple, as somebody uh, once said. It is a crown that was fashioned by the artist himself. In fact, I'll tell you some more. This is the wife of the artist. Her name was Marie, and the photographer called her the queen of his world. And there are literally thousands of photographs that he made of her between 19 mid-1940s to mid-1950s. In fact, some of these photographs I can't show you here because they're very much pinup style photos. He clearly adored his wife. So who was this artist? His name was Eugene von Brunchenhain, and he was a self-taught artist from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He was making art from the 1940s all the way up until when he passed away in the early 1980s. And he's a pretty fascinating guy. Here he is. This is a self-portrait he made in 1945. It's also a hand-painted photograph, like the one we saw earlier of his wife. And as you can see, he's written on it. So take a look. What do you notice? Do you have any thoughts or feelings about his style or hit the look on his face? What kind of guy does he seem like to you? You'll notice that he wrote on his collar, time produced none better, which sounds pretty self-confident to me. 
as I said, he was fascinating because he was making artwork independently, really without the support of an art school or a teacher. He was really kind of inventing things as he went along. Eugene was not a wealthy man. They had a small house and he used every part of it from what I've researched to make his artwork happen. The living room would be full of backdrops and props and costumes. The bathroom was a dark room. The kitchen table would be used as a landscape for photographs. And later in life, he became interested in oil painting. But again, he did it in his own way. He was a baker by trade. And so he would sometimes use the cardboard backing or the bottom of the, for the cakes as his canvas. And instead of always using a brush, maybe he didn't have access to a whole lot of brushes. He liked the way it looked to scratch with his hands onto the canvas and, and get texture that way. I'll show you an example of that. Here's an example of the very unique oil painting that Eugene was doing in the mid 1950s up into the mid 1960s. It shows once again how inventive he was and really how different this was from the photography he had been doing earlier. What do you think of that? It's so different. Such amazing color and so alive and, and vibrating almost. But that's not all. That is not all. This guy also made sculptures out of clay. Sometimes these were crowns that he made for his wife. Sometimes crowns for himself. Sometimes vessels. And believe it or not, he would save the chicken bones and turkey bones from their family meals and construct them into sculptures, into towers or little pieces of furniture, and he would paint them. They were very, very unique. Now, he did want to be recognized as an artist in his lifetime, and possibly sadly for him, he never got that recognition. He wasn't a famous gallery artist or he, he wasn't, he wasn't known. After he passed away, he became embraced by the art community. He, can, he was considered an outsider artist, mostly because he was self-taught. And now his pieces are highly prized and highly sought after. What do you think of him? I'm really, I would love to know what you think, whether you like his photography best, the sculptures, those paintings. I'm really curious. Personally, I'm quite enamored with those chicken bone sculptures. They're so intricate, so amazing. But most of all, I'm impressed with the way Eugene spent his whole life making art. And he didn't feel like, he, he didn't follow the rules. He fired clay in his home oven, from what I've heard. He scratched on the surface of his paintings. He, he just did what he wanted. And, and I'm, I'm impressed with that. I, I, I think that's one of the best things that we can learn from self-taught artists is to be free with the art materials that we have and to be clever about the art materials that we have, which leads me to my next thing. I have given you a link to be able to print out an image of Marie in her full glory, wearing her crown, and it's, in a, black, it's a black and white photo, and I would love for you to grab some pencils, colored pencils or markers, or watercolor, or crayons, whatever you have, and start adding color to this beautiful photograph. We know that Eugene used to do this. He used to add color to his photograph. So you should feel like you have complete license to color Marie however you like. I would love to see what you make. So if you want to email me, please do so. Here's my email address. And do look at the website for the American Folk Art Museum. There are amazing things to look at in there and you can learn so much. 
Thank you for spending time with me. I loved having this little video visit with you and I look forward to more in the future. And I'll introduce you to another artist. Thank you. See you soon.